Fake Knicks fans, welcome back to a new session of Knicks Bros TV here on Knicks Couch Report. Um, basically, this video is going to be much shorter than what I've done before. Just really want to get into the letter um, that was sent to the New York Knicks owner and Dolan's response back to the to the fan, or should I say, ex fan now. And I know it's a little it's a little late. I know um, you know it's already been talked about, but I really want to kind of put my input in there. Uh, this is really my opinion. It doesn't reflect uh, my brother's opinion. This is just me uh, on the topic of the letter. So let's kind of get into it. Basically, what happened is um, a filmmaker's dad uh, emails uh, Dolan, uh, James Dolan, and kind of expresses his opinion on um, the New York Knicks ever since Dolan has acquired the team. Basically, going on, going on to say that he's been a fan for since 1952. Uh, at one stage, I thought that you did a wonderful thing when you acquired everything from your dad. However, since then, it has been all downhill. Your work with Isaiah Thomas and everything else regarding the Knicks bringing on Phil Jackson was a positive beginning, but uh, lowballing Steve Kerr was a disgrace to the Knicks. The bottom line is that you merely continue to inter inter interfere with the franchise. And I went on to say how disappointed he is as a Knicks fan and he should sell the team and he's fed up with the entire process. Now, when first I heard about the email, um, I was just kind of like, oh man, it's probably one of those super ignorant Knicks fans that are just cursing out James Dolan and, you know, they want him out. So when I re read Dolan's, you know, response, I was like, you know, that doesn't sound bad. It just seems like a, you know, a good response. But when I read, you know, the fans' actual email, you know, it's not a very hateful email. I mean, it's a customer complaining about the product that he's receiving and he's not happy with it. I don't think he's being, um, you know, malicious of any in any sort of way. So let's see what Dolan had to say about that. Dolan said, uh, you know, Mr. Beerman, you are a sad person. Why would anybody write, write such hateful letter? I'm just guessing... But I'll, I'll bet your life is a mess and you are a hateful mess. Um, and he kind of went on to say, you know, how miserable his life is. And um, in the meanwhile, start rooting for the Nets because the Knicks don't want you. Um, how do I feel about that? I've, I haven't been the biggest Dolan fan. Um, I, I'm definitely on the side of a lot of the fans where I think he's mishandled a lot of situations. But he isn't the first owner that has dropped the ball. You know, not a lot of these owners aren't um, so involved with their franchises. I mean, it's probably their secondary, third, you know, third businesses. Um, and the guys that used to be involved, you know, um, for example, the Al Davises or, um, you know, the Jerry Jones or even Mark Cuban. I mean, that's a very rare individuals that can spend so much time and actually know something about basketball and be able to um, run the organization. A lot of times they just hire good individuals and sometimes you just, you know, get the luck and get the right people in and they're able to um, establish something at that franchise. So overall, I don't think Dolan has done a really good job. Do I feel like he overreacted? Yes. Um, you know, as an owner, you got to be smart enough and not say certain things like that. Um, certain individuals that are, you know, in the... You know, in, in viewers' eyes, you know, you should be able to, re you know, react to certain things a certain way. Especially, you know, Dolan's been, like, missing for a while now. I mean, you know, ever since Phil Jackson took over, um, Dolan hasn't been that involved. So, no, he shouldn't have reacted the way he did uh, whatsoever. So, I can totally agree with there. Um, but as far as Dolan is concerned, um, if Dolan would have decided to do something else, maybe do another, you know, bonehead decision and bring something like the whole Isaiah Thomas thing, and I would be like, you know what, I'm done with him. Forget it. You know, let's let, let's have him sell the team. You know, but the fact that he, he you know, he acquired Phil Jackson, um, and, you know, Derek Fisher came into play, and before that he acquired Carmelo Anthony, you know, he is trying to turn it around. Um, so... You know, all these guys, especially the ones that, you know, wanted the John Itzik gone, which I was totally up, you know, I really wanted that. Um, the same guys are coming in, putting up bulletin boards about uh, Dolan should sell the team, and that's enough. That's my opinion. As the guy is redeeming himself, we all knew what was coming this year. 
you know, we weren't going to be a playoff contending team. We're rebuilding. If, if you've stuck out with Dolan throughout the years, this is the time, you know, to do it. I think, you know, with Phil Jackson coming in, people are saying, should Phil Jackson leave? Should he not? Phil is not going to go anywhere. Phil is not going to run away from any any challenge. He took on the challenge. He knew what the challenge was. Sure, he's had a lot of bumps and roads, uh, you know, bumps uh, in the way, but he's going to be able to overcome it. You know, we, we are going to have a huge cap space opening up in, you know, 2015, 2016, where we're able to, um, you know, make that happen. This is, this is where me and certain New York fans – um, we just don't agree. We need to have more patience in New York. We need to have more patience. And it's the worst city to tell them to have patience in. But we have become our own biggest obstacle. Where we want to see results right there and there. And sometimes it doesn't work that way. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Because Phil Jackson took the job because of Dolan. Dolan James Dolan convinced him to. James Dolan gave up a lot of... Um, you know, a lot of the abilities for Phil Jackson to be able to take over. Now, for example, let's just say Dolan ends up selling the team. What happens now? Is Phil Jackson going to have the same freedom? Probably not. Is There's going to be uh, just as much as distraction outside outside the court. That's not going to help Phil Jackson rebuild the, cha- you know, build a championship team. That's taking a huge turnaround once again. And we didn't allow the plan to go through. Why? Because we're not patient. We all know what this season was going to happen. And what was going to happen in this season. So why are we freaking out this bad? Every night, what I do is I just, I watch the game to see how Galloway's doing. See how Thomas is doing. See if Tim Hardaway's improving. That's it. That's my opinion, guys. You let me know. I just felt like I, I had to kind of get that off my chest. Um, you know, there's too many guys out there who want Dolan's head. It makes no sense. You know, you, you finally, everybody, let's go back four or five months ago. Oh, my goodness, everything's great. Phil Jackson's here. Um, Dolan made an amazing decision. I can't believe he did that. You know, it was a desperate move, but he did it. And now everybody wants his head just because we're not having a successful season. We're not having a successful season because we have guys that are not willing to play. We have guys that are milking the money. You know, Phil Jackson and Derek Fisher are dealing with a whole bunch of players that are going to be off the books soon. They're not going to, they don't care about no triangle offense. Get rid of Dolan. Is Phil Jackson going to stick around? I don't know. You've already implemented the triangle offense. You're going to bring a new coach in? Because Derek Fisher's not going to stick around with, without Phil Jackson. So let's chill out on the panic button. It was an email that just got blown out of proportion like it always does. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. If you, don't like the, if you don't like the product that you see in Madison Square Garden, go to Barclays Center. It's a free country. Do whatever you want. All right? It, it just is what it is. But I promise you, the next two to three years, the Nets won't win anything. The Nets will not win anything. They they caused themselves a huge headache with the first year bringing all those players in and now trying to free up cap space. They're backtracking as much as we are. They just have enough establishment for them to be able to be relevant for the next year and a half. And that's just my perspective on it. Unless they kind of turn things around and try to be approaching more younger players. And if you think in your in the back of your mind... That James Dolan is dumb enough. Well, he's dumb enough to send this email. But is dumb enough to sell this team. This billion dollar team. You're out of your mind. Sterling didn't even want to sell the Clippers. Why? Everybody pressured him. He got some legal issues with the whole whole, um, controversy that was going on. That's why he sold his. But when you look at the Knicks, you're looking at the Madison Square Garden company as a whole. So you're talking about the the rights of the New York Knicks, the Rangers, the New York Liberty basketball team, 
Um, you're talking about the revenue share of the Madison Square Garden channel. No one in their right mind is going to be able to sell that. Because two years from now, in 2016, when we have the money to bring the big name players in here, that team is just going to be more relevant and revenue more than anything else. So again, guys, tell me what you think. I know it's a, it's a touchy subject. If you don't agree with me, please, you know, leave your comment at the bottom. I'm not attacking anyone or anything. Just sharing, you, sharing with you guys my opinion. Comment, subscribe, keep watching. Thank you, and have a good one. New York and worldwide, yo, to the Queensbridge militia, 9-6 shit.